Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. No walk-in on this video here today because my room is completely filled with boxes and luggage and packing materials because I'm about to get on the road with the first stop being San Diego Comic-Con, which I'm sure you guys know by now is actually this weekend. So in this video, I kind of wanted to do like sort of a shoot from the hip, talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on with the channel for the next, say, two weeks or so. I'm going to be on the road, going to different comic cons. Content might be a little bit sparse and random at times, might be in hotel rooms and things like that, uh, but it should be a lot of fun and I am definitely looking forward to it. And I think I kind of want to just use this time here in this video today to sort of maybe give a little bit of a prediction of what's going to happen at San Diego Comic-Con so that, you know, when we get to the other side of it a week from now or two weeks from now, we can sort of see if I was right or if something did in fact happen because, guys, we are now in the midsummer months of 2023 and uh, with con season upon us, usually that means a lot of interesting, juicy, stories, dramas, exclusives, you know, hot books, things like that that come out of these cons. And the question is, are we going to see something on the level of acetate gate once again? So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and my predictions. But before I get into it, if you guys drop me a like, comment, subscribe, if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, doing things I appreciate. But let's get into this video here today. Well, San Diego Comic-Con, very, very excited about this. Looking forward to it. Obviously, as I've mentioned here on the channel before, uh, no Hall H, no actors, SAG strike. You know, so the, the announcement side of things is going to be a little bit lackluster. And I think that there is, you know, a lack of enthusiasm going into SDCC this year. I mean, you know, a, a tempered lack of enthusiasm. You know, just the other week, or uh, excuse me, just last weekend, I was at Torpedo Comics Con. Uh, maybe I met some of you guys out there, uh, took my book out there, which was a lot of fun, uh, but I had a chance to kind of speak to some of the dealers and get sort of their pre-take on kind of what is going on in the vintage market at the moment. And I got to say, you know, uh, the dealers I talked to uh, were a little bit down, a little bit apprehensive on the state of things, the state of the market, and not so confident going into San Diego Comic-Con because a lot of the dealers that were at Torpedo are also headed to SDCC as well. And they're starting to think, you know, maybe uh, this, this lack of enthusiasm uh, is going to, you know, put a damper on some of the sales in the market. Maybe attendance for the show is going to be down because, you know, a lot of people uh, were looking to go to SDCC, obviously excited to, you know, do a Hall H or, you know, go to a panel and see an actor speak, maybe get an autograph from somebody that they were excited to get. Uh, and now that they can't do that because of the SAG strike, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that had told me, uh, at least at TorpedoCon, that they had been canceling their tickets or heard from other people that they were canceling their tickets. So you have to think that this is going to take a big hit on the attendance of SDCC, uh, at least this coming week. I mean, I, I, I got to imagine that it's like a 10, 20 percent, you know, knock to their attendance, uh, if not a lot more due to the actor strike. So we'll be interesting to see that. I definitely plan on going there. You know, I'm going to do my uh, typical, you know, talk to dealers video. I think that that'll be a really, really good one because, you know, that'll be a really, uh, you know, accurate sort of midway point through 2023, you know, a little bit of a pulse check, a little bit of a gut check where we are in the state of the market, uh, what they feel on the ground. So that'll be interesting to have that discussion with them. And I'll definitely put out that video at some point when I am on the road, but I'm going to be going to SDCC. After SDCC, I'm going to be getting on a plane, going over to St. Louis for a little content thing that has to do with my Kickstarter and my comic book there. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then I'm going to head over to Terrificon on the East Coast the very next weekend at the end of this month. And that I am also very much looking forward to it. So if you're out there in Terrificon, definitely say hi if you see me. I'm going as just an attendee and not necessarily as somebody who has any kind of booth. But I just want to take a quick moment before I get into the whole exclusive drama side, prediction side of what's going to happen at San Diego Comic-Con. Just a few shout outs of what I'm going to be doing down there. If you are going to SDCC on Saturday, booth 1105, the short box booth, I'm going to be there signing my book, Sanity, Rise of the Occult, issue number one, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Definitely swing by if you're there. Come say hi. Maybe grab a book if you want to grab a book. Have a conversation. A couple other little things. The DCD Collects booth, which is booth number 1605, is going to be hosting Sean Chen and his new project, Genesis, 
which I think is really awesome. And if you guys happen to know, Sean Chen did my cover B for Sanity Rise of the Occult. So you can take your copy over to that booth, 1605, and go get this one signed. You would be the literal first person to get this book signed. Although he does have some copies. I, I sent him some copies, so he'll have it at that booth as well if you're interested in picking it up from him. And then lastly, Pascal Campion is also going to be at San Diego Comic-Con with his own booth. Of course, booth number 5012 or 5012. And if you guys happen to know him, he did my cover C right here. So you can go get cover C signed by him at that booth as well. You would be also the first person to get that cover signed by the actual cover artist that did it. Although he also has a few copies that I sent his way. So he'll be able to sign one or you'll be able to pick one up from him as well. All right, a couple other little things. Into the Void comic, shout out to them. Jeff over there is hosting two panels that I'm gonna be a part of Friday, 12 to 1 p.m. in room 28DE and Sunday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. in room 29AB. We are going to be having a conversation, comic collecting in today's market. Definitely go check that out. A great, great panel. We're going to have uh, Bueller there, who I'm super excited to meet. Never actually met Bueller in, in person. Rage Theo is going to be on the panel. We got Finest City Comics on the panel. It's going to be a good one. We're going to talk about, you know, the state of the market. And on top of that, I got another panel that I'm doing on Friday as well from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the Neil Morgan Art Auditorium. Shout out to Efren from Past Points Comic. We're going to be bringing back our panel from last year talking about comic book YouTube, how to start a channel, the sort of the, uh, the world that exists in comic book YouTube, uh, some of the things that we've learned in having this journey. I'm gonna be joined by John and Richard from Bronze and Modern Gods and Ian from the Hood Rat Podcast, which is very, very exciting. But okay, those are our little announcements. Of course, had to get those out of the way. So I appreciate you guys sitting through. So let's talk about San Diego Comic-Con and what it means for the state of the market coming up. I mean, you know, like I said at the, at the beginning of the video, we're not going to get be getting the actor announcements. We're not going to be getting, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, oh, this person is cast as this uh, villain and the spec book is going to pop off. But what it feels like we're going to be getting a lot of this year is it feels like exclusives are coming back, guys. Exclusives are coming back in a big, big way because I feel like there are a lot of people right now in the comic book market looking to make their own book, looking to create their own exclusive. And we're seeing a lot of them at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, if you guys happen to remember, I think it was last summer at New York Comic-Con. That was when we had like 30, 40, 50 exclusives come out. It was wild. It was wild how many exclusives were coming out at that uh, particular Comic-Con. And I think that that was sort of the end of the market, the last little ditch effort to kind of capitalize on, you know, the hype around exclusives and things like that. Of course, culminating with the acetate gate situation, just uh, a con earlier uh, than NYCC. And after NYCC, I, I would say that... Um, the fact that the exclusives didn't really sell too well, or at least that was my understanding of it, uh, it made retailers and, and people pull back a little bit on creating the exclusive covers at the Comic Cons. And that, of course, was sort of the end of you know what we were calling con season. But now it's been basically eight, nine months, and I think people are looking to get back into the swing of doing exclusives overall. And so just want to show you guys, just alone, Boom Studios, I'll just scroll through. Look at how many exclusives they're bringing to the Boom Booth. You know, I, I'm counting over 30 right here. So we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of these books pop up in the market. One of my favorite comic book stores here in SoCal, We Can Be Heroes, they're going to be hosting a bunch of artists at their booth, 1901. And they also have their very own exclusive, Chino XL. And on top of that, shout out to Javon Jordan. If you guys know Javon Jordan, he's going to be down there in booth 5507, the blue chip comic, he did an exclusive for Nico of the blue chip, which you guys know Nico. I'm always talking to Nico when I do my dealer videos. I'm certainly gonna take up a little bit of his time when I'm down there. And he's got his very own exclusive with Javon Jordan doing his signature character. Now, I mentioned these exclusives and I bring them up and I'm just kind of giving you guys some awareness to them because it's my suspicion that something is gonna happen at SDCC when we get there. One of these exclusives is gonna be this year's 
whatnot controversy or acetate gate or something, you know, crazy is going to happen in the comic book market. Some sort of drama is going to, you know, unveil and then some exclusive cover is going to gain infamy within the comic collecting spaces. And if I had to predict what cover it's going to be, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But what I will tell you is that it's feeling like a lot of controversy is really starting to bubble up around the AI generated covers. And I have a feeling that there might be some exclusives out there that could be AI generated. And once we kind of get to the other side of things and people start to find out that this say hot book was sold as an AI generated cover, that might start a lot of controversy in the comic book market. It's been really, really interesting. You know, shout out to Brian McClay, Beyond Wednesday, uh, doing great coverage of this. Uh, Thoro from Thoro Comics, doing great covers of this, talking about AI comic books. I mean, as we all know from the writer and actor strike, uh, AI is a big topic, and it's also a big topic right now in comic books. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that have a huge problem with it. You know, it, it's my opinion that at, at a certain point, AI is going to take over. The question just is, how do we want it to take over? What's going to be the ethical way for it to take over these creative fields? Will it just be a thing that is a tool that artists use and it helps, you know, service their work? Or is it really going to, you know, replace artists and creators and writers out there? I mean, that's really sort of the big question. But there are AI covers that are being generated right now for exclusives and, uh, you know, retail comics and things like that. And I think that the big issue, at least in comic books, is, you know, the transparency of it all. I think that that really is uh, the thing that is going to create the controversy in and of itself. I think if somebody goes out there, let's say you're a retailer, you're a comic book store, and you say, hey, this is our retail variant, and we did it with an AI-generated cover, and you wear that on your sleeve, and if someone still wants to buy it, there's frankly nothing wrong with that, right? You can just say, hey, we made an AI cover, here you go. But I think where the controversy comes in is if you say, hey, here's our hot new exclusive cover at San Diego Comic-Con, and you just don't happen to mention that it was done by AI or you're a little bit like a cagey in revealing who the artist was, you don't really talk about it. I think that is the issue because in your heart of hearts, if you're unwilling to admit that this book is AI generated, if you're a little bit apprehensive to wear that on your sleeve, then you yourself know that inherently you feel like you're doing something wrong. I think that that is the issue. I think if you're somebody out there who's like, no, 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 this is my AI cover and I'm gonna sell it, I don't care, this is AI, like this is what I did, then by all means do it, you know, you own it. And if people reject it, people don't want the product, then who cares, that's totally fine. But I think if we're being honest with ourselves at this current moment in time, there is this hesitation amongst retailers, artists, creators, and comic book collectors to sort of pick up anything that is labeled as AI generated or to, you know, proudly say post on Instagram, hey, check out this comic I picked up. And yes, I know that it's AI and I'm super, super happy to have it in my comic book collection. I think that there is a little bit of an apprehension for uh, people to be proud of that. And I think that has instinctively to do with the fact that everybody knows that there's something about it that feels a little bit off. So I have a feeling that going into San Diego Comic-Con with the amount of exclusives that are coming out, with the amount of you know booths that are bringing their own book, I would say that it's probably pretty likely that a few of those SDCC exclusives are going to be AI generated. It'll be wild to see how the comic book market reacts to that. But we won't know until we get there. Of course, this is why you play the game. We gotta actually get to San Diego Comic-Con to find out what is going to happen. Well, that is all for this video. That was me just sort of talking about the road to San Diego Comic-Con. Again, like I mentioned at the top, I'm gonna to be on the road, you know, uh, headed down there this weekend. I'm gonna be at the con, got, got the signings, which I'm really, really excited for. I'm bringing my book there, which I'm super, super excited for. Hopefully I meet some of you guys, maybe come up, say hi. I'm gonna be doing some of those panels with all those other great uh, comic book content creators. Then I'm headed to St. Louis and then Terrificon after that. So content is gonna be a little bit sparse in the next coming weeks or so. I'll try to do some live streams for the hotel. I'll certainly edit my talk to dealers video. I think that's one that I'll at least be able to put out while I'm on the road. So look forward to that. And then tomorrow I'm actually gonna be releasing the next episode of Swagglecast which is a conversation with Gene Miguel from Shortbox, the CEO of the company, 
awesome guy. We had a great conversation and we actually talked a little bit about AI, except not in the cover generation. We talked about AI grading, which I think is a really interesting topic as well. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. That was my road to SDCC. What do you guys think about what is gonna happen here at the con? I mean, no matter what happens, whether it's exclusive drama, or announcement drama or spec drama, or even maybe the worst case of all, apathy drama. Maybe we go to San Diego Comic-Con and attendance is down, nobody's spending money, nobody cares about comic books. That might be the actual worst case scenario. Anyways, what do you guys think is going to happen at San Diego Comic-Con? Are you guys going to any cons this summer? Anyways, thank you all for watching. See you down in SDCC if you're gonna be there. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.